Experts claim that Britain is being held back by a major shortage of science and engineering students. But even though these reports are common, competition for jobs remains fierce. To counter this growing problem, students at a Bromsgrove Secondary School are getting ready to swap the classroom for real-world experience with the launch of an employer-backed scheme designed to revolutionise the future of engineering in the UK. Dave Hadley-Price, headmaster of North Bromsgrove High School, was an initiator for this idea when he was looking for opportunities to develop a GCSE engineering qualification. I wanted an engineering partner who would help us to develop a GCSE engineering qualification. Unfortunately, that qualification was taken off the list of approved qualifications by the Department for Education, so we needed an alternative. So after a conversation with Alan Lusty as CEO, we came up with this idea of offering a pre-apprenticeship course where the youngsters would come to ADI for an afternoon a week to study the various aspects of engineering that you see behind us. Experts also report that too many 14 to 16 year olds are studying courses with little or no value because performance tables incentivise schools to offer these inadequate qualifications. As a result, between a quarter and a third of young people between the ages of 16 to 19 are either doing nothing at all or pursuing courses which offer no route to higher levels of education. What we've done at North Bromsgrove is provided about half a day, so one GCSE option for this and then the rest of the GCSE course, all students study English language, English literature, mathematics, at least two sciences, and three other GCSEs. So they all study eight GCSEs as well as this at a bare minimum. So none of the students suffer from a narrowing of the curriculum. Head teacher Dave Hadley-Price thinks that this type of apprenticeship programme will be much more effective and with a lower percentage dropout rate than has been seen with other apprenticeship programmes. And one of the things that this course guarantees is that any youngster who goes through the pre-apprenticeship course and then enters an, an apprenticeship in engineering will be doing something that they know exactly what they're getting into and there will be a very low dropout rate. ADI's Mechanical Managing Director believes that this pre-apprenticeship qualification will create a comprehensive model which other schools, employers and members of BITC will be able to replicate. Uh, this, this is year one and we've taken a, an initial cohort of 12 students. Uh, those 12 students will, will spend 10% of their GCSE time in our, uh, in our practical environments, in our um, pre-assemble, uh, pre-apprenticeship programme. Next year we'll take a further 12, so we'll, we'll effectively be running with 24 students in our, uh, our pre-apprentice academy. Uh, and ADI as a business has committed and signed up to the 5% club. So by 2020 we, we've committed to 5% of our workforce being apprentices. I like, I like to work with cars and mechanics and um, engineering and like anything to do with like, the engineering trade. I like the fact that you could start working experience young so then you get a better, you can find out what you like and maybe get a better career out of it when you're older. My dad works at Jaguar Land Rover in Solihull and he's been quite inspiring and motivational for me and he's pushed me along to do this. I would say it's more of an option than what I definitely want to be but it is, I can always come back to it if uni or whatever doesn't work out for me. Member of Parliament for Birmingham Northfield Richard Burden, who was visiting the opening of the pre-apprenticeship programme, hopes that these kind of employer-backed schemes will help the industry break down stereotypes about apprenticeships and ensure that their value continues to rise. There's a lot of misunderstanding around what an apprenticeship is. For adults, often they think of an apprenticeship as something that happened in the 1950s or 1960s and then died out. Um, sometimes, sadly, there is a bit of snobbery around apprenticeships. The view that if you embark on more of an academic uh, career in post-16, um, then that's higher status and so on, because it's very different to a place like Germany, where being an engineer is a high status occupation. Apprenticeships have always been high status, and that's one of the reasons they've been so successful in engineering. And if the 14 to 16 year olds learn that, then maybe their mums and dads and brothers and sisters learn that as well. And we start to change those attitudes, which we have to change as a country, because it's very different.